So in this step, um, I have glued various items to my board, which is right here. In order to affix flex seal to this panel, I have to make sure that the rubber does not stick to anything that's on here. So this involves cooking spray, which I'm going to use to basically spray this so that the rubber won't stick. And then I'm going to take tape and basically make a frame that kind of holds the rubber in place while it dries. I'm going to do this off camera and when I come back, you'll see what it looks like when it's ready to be poured and we will do an actual pour. So as you can see, I've got the butter on the actual board and what I'm doing is I'm smoothing it out so that it's not bumpy. It actually smells really good too as it is edible. The other cool thing is that anything that the rubber won't stick to conforms to its shape, which means that any textures that I have in here are gonna stay. So in this case, it'll be kind of interesting to see what happens. I'm gonna make this a very rough looking sort of thing. And by the way, uh, this is pasta and this is actually a form of linoleum. So you can say I'm actually doing the reverse of carving. This next phase, basically making a tray, as you can see. I like to do a couple layers of this. So as you can see, I've made the frame and I've added tape which has got about a half an inch from the top. I'm not gonna pour that much rubber, obviously. I'm gonna do only about a quarter of an inch. Usually I make the frame, what I call the frame before I spray, so that nothing goes wrong with my pour. What I'm going to do is um, make sure that this is on tight. I'll do that by adding an extra layer of tape. Next comes the part that you're signed up to see here, which is I'm going to actually pour. So let's do this. Here it is. This is what we're going to pour. Some people are put off by the smell, but I kind of like it. And there it is, liquid rubber. And I'm going in. So as you can see, I didn't get all of it, so I'm going to pour a little more. More doesn't, ha doesn't hurt here. The rubber will, of course, conform to itself. It's pretty good coverage. I'm going to add a little more just to be sure. Our mold is done. So there you go. That is now a Flex Seal print mold and it will do its job very nicely. Hopefully it won't be all sticky like this. And look at this. You know what you can use this for? Drawing. Look how neat that was. I wasn't, I didn't spill a thing. Ah, so proud of myself. So there you have it. That is a Flex Seal printing plate in progress. I'm going to take this and basically just set it to dry. 
I only cover it so that no dust or anything weird gets in there. And that's it, basically. I'm just gonna let it dry, and then a few days later, I'll come back and see where we are with this. Okay, I removed the uh, outer tape off camera because that takes a little while, especially if some of the rubber stuck to the tape. So in this case, as you can see, very little tape is left. The main bulk of the tape is removed. And here I made a bit of an incision, or I'm going to make another incision to make sure that the rubber comes free and you'll get to see what the entire thing looks like. By the way, the drying time, I left it drying for about, I would say that I left it drying for a good four days. And now I'm gonna start peeling. I like doing this slowly because just in case something came loose, And there is my completely rubberized piece. This can now be used to make art. And this guy right here, now I'm gonna wash off all this um, oil that's still on here. And then I will rubberize it um, so that it will We'll see if we can make a test print. Okay, so I'm back. I have washed this, and maybe you can see all the intricate details that are in there. Maybe you can't, it's hard, I know, because it's black. I'm gonna rubberize this, and I will show that process later. For now, what I thought we would do is, let's create a test print. And for my test print, I'm going to use brown and black. Since I'm doing this in my garage, it's a little messy. I have no idea how this is going to come out. But you'll get an idea of what it is, how I do it. So basically that's it. I'm going to start applying paint. And in case you're wondering, all this stuff will just wash right off. Which makes cleanup really nice. So on this side, I'm adding a little bit more browns. Most people would probably use a roller for this, but I don't know why I like painting on it. My goal is to get that paint on everything and not leave a single thing dry. When I work on larger pieces, I'm going to use a retardant to extend the life of the paint so that I can apply it to larger areas. Cool. So I'm ready to make a print. And this is the paper I've chosen, which I kind of had pre-treated. And I'm just going to set it down right here. It's going to cover the whole thing. And using my hands, I will press onto this rubber. What I really like is that the paper doesn't move. Now. I'm going to pull it. And there's my first print made with this wonderful rubber printing plate. So as you can see, that's going to be a very nice start to a painting. 